This week we're looking to set the record straight on where the market's at, so stay tuned. Welcome to another local market update with Rick Batista. Welcome, welcome to another weekly market update. We're in a bit of what I call the summer slumber. Many of you may be on vacation, physically and or mentally, and I don't blame you. Enjoy the warm weather while we have it, especially for those watching in Chicago or other places that enjoy cold winters. Before we get started, I'd like to take a little poll and ask you, where do you think home prices are headed in the next 12 months? Whether you're listening from Chicagoland or elsewhere, I'd love to hear your answer. Please share your thoughts in the comments below. You know, with so many things going on with the economy right now, as well as in and around housing, I'm committed to bringing you weekly market updates because monthly just doesn't cut it. This week, we're covering a good amount of information because we came into 2023 with so much confusion, wacky predictions, et cetera, et cetera, and we wanna help set the record straight. Spoiler alert, I'm gonna tell you the punchline right now. Beginning in around mid-2022, the market adjusted, and that's where we find ourselves right now, an adjusted and adjusting market. That's what happens in life, whether we like the teeter or the totter, whatever floats your boat. Life will always balance itself out. Some people might call it karma, natural selection, you get what you deserve. I call it life, and life is all about balance. And if you don't have the right balance within yourself, you're in for some fun times. Guess what? Only you can work on that. What can I help you with? Well, I'm committed to helping you have the right balance when it comes to information so that you may make the best decisions possible for you and your household. If you've been watching our videos, thank you. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Hope you stay well. But whether you're a new or returning champion, I'm bringing information about the housing market, where we've been, where we are, and where we are likely to be down the line. Without the right information, it's easy to be confused, panic, follow the masses, and sometimes the masses are asses, right? So don't be an ass, be informed. Now let's be smart asses together. Before we get started, I want to let you know that this video discusses both national and local data. The local data we'll share in just a bit is for Chicago proper, the 77 areas, and all that we do serve is all of Chicago land, including the burbs. Later in this video, we're only going to dive into the city's data. So let's get started with a fun fact, and we'll share some other info and insights with you before covering the city's numbers. Fun facts, fun facts, market time. As fixed rate mortgages rise, adjustable rate mortgages, otherwise known as ARMS, have become an increasingly popular option among home buyers, especially for borrowers taking out loans exceeding $1 million. According to recent data from CoreLogic, ARMS comprised 18.6% of the dollar volume of conventional single family mortgage originations at last measure, up from a low of 4% in January 2021. For mortgage originations exceeding $1 million, however, ARMS comprised 45% of the dollar volume, a 6% increase compared to the same period last year. And whether you're taking out a $1 million dollar loan or considerably less, we work with a wonderful network of lenders who can make your dream of home ownership a reality, with some lenders being able to close in about three weeks' time. If you need a referral, you can reach out to me. I'm happy to make a love connection and get that conversation going for you. Let's start off with a quote here from Mark Zandi, the chief economist at Moody's Analytics. Typically, it takes a while for sellers to cut asking prices as they psychologically can't give up on the highest Zillow price they've seen for their homes. Not this time. Sellers are caving. Buckle in. Assuming rates remain near their current 6.5% in the economy skirts recession, then national house prices will fall almost 10% peak to trough. Most of those declines will happen sooner rather than later. Well, number one, I think that uh, is going to be interesting to see what happens from area to area, region to region, and certainly neighborhood or area to neighborhood or area, especially across the metro cities, and we'll see what happens here in Chicago. Well, one of the issues that Mark brings up uh, is very true. You know, so that's something that we face in today's market, something I've talked about before at length in previous videos. We do have inventory. It may not be as much as we'd like, and that's why we're still seeing multiple offers and outbidding in some areas. Luckily, not the same insanity we saw in parts of 2020, 21, and, near, and early 22, at least here in Chicago, but still something that we're coming across, even in the slower market. But the bigger issue is that there's plenty of inventory that is on the market that is not priced properly, given their current state condition. More importantly, they weren't priced right from the get-go. Why? Well, sellers tend to take a little longer to catch up with the market than buyers do. And I get it, selling is an emotional process. Buying is too, but for you sellers, it can be very different. You're parting with a place that may have had great meaning for you, your family. That home is filled with memories, good or bad, they're your memories. No matter how badly you know the right thing to do is move on and take on your next adventure, it's hard to let go sometimes. For buyers, you're looking to create new memories in a home. And although those emotions are very real and very strong, it's hard to compare something you've had to something you want. With that said, although both sellers and buyers have access to the same data and information, it tends to be interpreted differently because sellers and buyers may have a different perspective when looking at the same exact thing. In my mind and my experience, buyers can have a more objective mindset and greater patience, 
Sellers can have a more subjective mindset and you best have a great deal of patience if you don't price your home right from the get-go. Why? Because buyers may use that objective mindset to pass up your property and wait for one that is priced fairly and reasonably. What does that lead to? More market time. More market time leads to more vulnerability. When you're trying to negotiate, when you finally do get an offer, you're on the short end of the stick, unfortunately. Sellers, if you want a realtor, to be honest with you, someone who knows the market and the numbers, while taking into consideration your goals, thoughts, emotions, feelings, and all the human parts of the puzzle that go into the selling process, I'm here for you. Now let's talk more about market conditions. Many reputable folks and sources made some predictions or projections before entering 2023. There's plenty of silliness out there as well. Too much in my opinion, but here's someone who admitted they were wrong. Here's a quote from Bill McBride, the founder of Calculated Risk. As inventory picked up sharply in 2022, I adjusted my outlook in October 2022 and wrote house prices seven years in purgatory. I noted that a 10% decline in normal prices now seemed likely. However, the inventory surge in 2022 was somewhat of a head fake. Some potential sellers quickly listed their homes, probably remembering what happened with house prices in the 2006 to 2011 period, but that surge ended pretty quickly. Let's take a look at what he's talking about. In this graph from realtor.com, you see what typically happens in more normal markets. What's being compared here is 2022 to the more normal years of 2017, 18, and 19. You see the dotted vertical line? That's where the market tends to reach its peak. It happened last year. The rate hike caused many sellers to believe that prices were going to plummet, so we had more listings hitting the market. That same rate hike either pushed buyers to buy immediately or say, whoa, whoa, silver, and stopped or put a pause on their search. So instead of going downward after the typical peak period, listings were on the rise. Therefore, there were projections that the market was going to be flooded by new listings. Did that happen? Well, let's take a look at the next graph from Realtor.com. Guess what? It did not. In fact, we ended the year 21% less year over year. And that low inventory is what's helping keep home prices from dipping much lower than what people would anticipate in a market with higher interest rates. Now let's move on to foreclosures for a moment. This data from Adam shows foreclosure filings comparing the first six months going back to 2008, especially for those who want to compare this market to what was happening in 2006, 7, and 8. Yes, foreclosure filings are on the rise. You got me. There is a, there's no reason to panic. You can't predict the future, but there's likely no reason to panic since today's market is way more foundationally sound than the shenanigans we saw leading up to the 08 crash. Moving right along, here's a chart from Case Schiller. They looked at month-over-month -month price movement and took the 48-year average from, from 1973 to 2021, which you'll see as the black line, and then compared that average to last year, 2022, the orange line. Take a look at how 2022 compared to that 40-year your average in the months of January through May. Here's where we can see very clearly the market adjusted thereafter starting in June. And like I said at the top of the video, we may not like it, but life is full of ups and downs. We panic when things go up too high and we panic when things fall just a bit. Times have certainly been tough for the human species and society throughout history. Just look at the pandemic. While many were dealing with loved ones being hospitalized or passing, while we were fighting like venomous cats and rabid dogs about vaccines, while we've been fighting inflation and the rising cost of everything, while quality continues to go down, in my personal opinion, the real estate market saw the best two years ever in recorded history. Life's goofy like that. Bad news is good news and vice versa. One person's ceiling is another person's floor. You can find yourself on the seesaw of life in control with your feet flat on the ground one day and up in the air, feet dangling the next. Whichever way you see it, life doesn't stop and will always balance itself out. Looking at this next chart, Fannie Mae is always doing surveys to get a handle of how you, the general public, feel about the housing market. As recently as June, about one out of every four people believe prices will depreciate or go down over the next 12 months. What do you think? Like I said at the top of this video, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. I think across the country at the end of the year and or over the next 12 months, prices will remain flat overall and or see slight growth in the majority of markets, so long as we see rates come down a bit. If we see rates come down and way more inventory hit the market, it's going to look like people running into Costco and Sam's Club to raid pallets of toilet paper. Hopefully we won't see any of that nonsense again. I also believe that some markets may see continued adjustment downward when it comes to home prices. In the end, I believe that how well your market does will be impacted by region. No matter what happens, we'll keep an eye on things and help you stay informed along the way. Last couple of slides here. We're taking a look at the percent change in home values from six different sources. Case Schiller, FHFA, and CoreLogic have data through April. Their main number should be coming out this week. Zillow, Black Knight, and Freddie Mac's data is through May. What does the data from each of these sources demonstrate? Flat to minimal growth across the board. A normal market. No need to panic. Remember, the more we panic, the more powerful evil becomes. Let's stick together, keep our heads on straight, and help one another discover and be empowered by the facts and the truth. Now, it's time to... Wake up! Wake up!
for the moment you've all been waiting for. This information is provided by the Chicago Association of Realtors for the week ending July 15th and current as of yesterday, July 24th. From fun facts, we go over to quick facts, and these this is looking at year-over-year -year changes. The new listings in the detached market down 27.2%, while the attached being condos and townhomes down by 22.1%. Under contract, up by 22% in the de detached market and up 4.3%. And the attached, that's awesome. Go Chicago. Homes for sale down by 23.9% in the detached market and attached down by 34.5%. We need more inventory. Diving a little deeper in a new listings, we wrapped up the week of July 15th with 356 single family detached homes hitting the market. That was a three month average of 348 down by 23.4% year over year. And attached market, we saw 600 new listings hit the market. The three month average of 551, down by 30.1%. Under contract, single family detached market wrapped up the week of July 15th with 222 homes, a three month average of 197 and 6.8% year over year. And single family attached, 336, 319 was the three month average, down by 17% year over year. In inventory of homes for sale, we wrapped up the week of July 15th with 2,208 single family detached homes, the three month average of 2,191, bringing us to a 9.5% dip downward year over year. Attached market, 3,399, with a three month average of 3,280, down by 31.5% year over year. So, what does all this information mean for you? Heck if I know. It all depends on what's going on in your life and your household. Let's start a conversation and see how we can help you make the most informed decisions. If you like copies of any of the reports or slides that we shared with you today, feel free to reach out. You can call, text, or email. My contact information is below. And remember, love and money may come and go, but time is something we never get back. So I appreciate and thank you for spending some of your time with me today. If you want to stay on top of the market with us, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And think of one person who you believe would benefit from this information and be sure to share it with them. As always, take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll catch you next time.